everyone, I'm Luke Hector and you're watching The Broken Meeple. This is a YouTube channel about board games where I give reviews, top tens and my honest opinions regardless of the consequences. Get on with it. So today with a review copy sponsored by Kiender, we're taking a look at the Rattus Big Box. I have had no experience with Rattus since before when this game was made. I heard about it, I briefly, I think it was mentioned on the Dice Tower in some of their earlier top tens, I thought, well, that sounds okay, you know, I'd give it a shot, and then it went out of print, and I could never find a copy, and nobody else had a copy, so I just figured, oh well, I'll pass it by. Then this big bug's got announced, with essentially all the expansions that have ever been released for it, as well as one bonus one. And it's like, you know what, now's a good time, because I'm not in this club of colder than you. I can play some of these older games and still get some enjoyment out of them. And there are some older games that really do deserve a lot of credit. Now this isn't super old, I think the original came out about 2010, so it's not like this one's ancient. Although I forget it's 2023 sometimes, and that's still 13 years ago. Man, I feel old. <laughs> Especially as I've only just turned 39 recently. But, you know, I wanted to give this one a shot and see if it was worth it, or if it's just one that we can say, you know what, let's lose it to time. So the concept in Rattus is fairly simple. You essentially have an area control map of Europe, and what you're trying to do is to get the most population by the end of the game. Your population being your various little meeples that you've got. The basic game, as I'm going to go over now, is essentially that on your turn you get to place population on the map and then you have the option to pick a class card of which you've got the basic few that you start that you have in the introductory game. I believe this is the introductory six that there are. You know, a peasant, a king, a merchant, a, a, was it a, a monk, a soldier and a witch. And essentially, these class cards give you a special bonus that you can use during the turn. So you can add extra population to turn, you can move them around, you can move rat tokens around, etc. But the risk with having these is that it makes you more susceptible to the plague, which is essentially what the setting of the game is. You want to get more population onto the map, but survive the plague as it's going around the place. There is a piece a plague marker, shall we say, or essentially a Grim Reaper piece, that you move around the map after you've chosen a class card, and with this piece, you get to spread more of these rat tokens. They effectively are just circular tokens that you pass by in regions, depending on how many people are there, and then you resolve the plague where the marker is. So the idea with these tokens is that they essentially have two aspects of information. A limit, which is how many people need to be there for it to trigger, and effects from class cards and majorities. So there are occasions where people will just die anyway. That's sometimes when it's a majority from a player. But then there's pictures of the class icons on there as per some of these cards. So if you're holding one of these class cards and the token resolves where you are, you could end up losing more population. So there is a risk associated with having some of these cool abilities and there's no limit to how many of these you can have, but you can't just willingly give them away. Somebody has to take them off you. So I could be sitting here with four really good abilities, but that means that nearly every single marker that gets revealed, I'm gonna lose somebody if I'm there. So it could end up being more painful than the abilities are worth. And that literally is pretty much the crux of the basic game. You just carry on in this fashion, doing turn after turn, resolving plague after plague, until eventually you get to the end of the game when the tokens have run out, resolve the plague everywhere one last time, and see who has the most population to see who wins the game. So yeah, not much else to really explain, and a lot of this box doesn't even relate to the basic game. It was these six cards, your player pieces, a bunch of rat tokens, and the board. That's pretty much it. And there are two rule books here, but one of them is solely for the base game by itself, and this is a very simple game to play. I mean, there's your basic setup, two pages there, and then there's one, two, three, four pages, Five. Five for the entire rule set. And some of that is just to explain the rules for the class cards. And again, these are really simple. This is a family weight game through and through. I dare say even a gateway game. It really does not require a lot of complexity or thought behind it. You could play this with just about anybody. Now, of course, does that mean there's enough meat involved? Rat meat in this case? Well, the game itself is pretty light. I mean, most of it just comes down to whether you want some of these abilities, and the abilities are pretty straightforward. You know, can I get more pop, more flexibility, more aggression, or more safety for the population I've got? You know, that's essentially what you're doing. The most weird one is probably the witch, where you get to look at tokens and swap them around, but other than that, these aren't particularly complicated. Now, in this version, you can play the game with up to six players. This involves using another class card, which is essentially like an Islamic uh, class of card, and it's just another card that you throw in and you use more of the map. 
I, I am a bit of annoying, I have an annoyance with these games where the area control is here's the whole board, but when you only have so many players, you just ignore half the board. And it's the same with this one. You know, yeah, it's a fairly big board, but aesthetics wise, it's beige as all get out. I mean, this is just like, bleh. it's not a particularly great looking board, but in three players, you don't like use all of that and all of this bottom bin. It's just, well, you know, could we, you know, do a little bit more with the map? It's like, nope, it's just literally alienate a bunch of territories. It's the same problem I have with power grid. So unless you play with five or six players, a lot of this map you don't use, and it's mainly just more territory. There's no real difference between any of the areas here. It's just how much of the map do you use? Now, in terms of whether it scales well, I found that when I played this with three players, it was just a bit lacking. The tokens didn't they didn't trigger as often as they could have done, and so three players just felt kind of boring, really. Four seems to be the sweet spot, and possibly five. Six players is a little bit too chaotic with these cards. Yes, you lose the whole board, and certainly these rat tokens will trigger left, right, and center for the most part, but when you've got only seven or eight of these class cards to use, and the six of you, uh, you might go, well, I'm gonna hang on to this king, and then by the time it gets back round to you, you'll be lucky if it's still in your possession at that point. So it gets a little bit too manic with six. Five, not too bad, but you still get a similar problem. Four seems to be just that, that point where you've got enough of the map to care and a, enough of the tokens to trigger. But honestly, it's hard to say what is the perfect player count for this. Four, five, it kind of chops and changes. I mean, a lot of it does depend on these rat tokens because if you play with too few players, you just don't have them trigger enough. And so it's just like, oh, this is the most ineffectual plague ever. So really the base set of ratters on its own with nothing else included for me only really gets a five out of 10. It's average. It's not particularly exciting. It's not particularly good at scaling with players. And you know, you kind of just lose any real care after a first few games. There's not a lot of variety with just the base game. Now, of course, you're not buying this just for the base game. You're buying it for the big bucks, which comes with a multitude of expansions and modules that you can add to the game to add more meat to it. So do these modules increase the rating? Well, to answer that, we've got the rule book for the expansions. Everything is explained in a separate rule book going over the modules in their detail. Now, I'm just gonna go over each one in basic terms because this is quick draw, but firstly, the Pied Piper expansion. It basically adds two more class cards for each of the different symbols that you get. So you've got like royalty and you've got peasant and that. So you get two more green, two more blue, two more pink, etc. And that's pretty much it. Some of them have got weird funky rules. They might use some extra pieces, you know, like putting up walls and stuff. But yeah, the Pied Piper expansion is basically just a must throw in. So next up we have Africanus. Now Africanus doesn't add a lot to the game. It basically adds this deck of region cards and a few class cards specific to using these regions. And all these region cards are, besides looking extremely bland, I mean, it is literally a vomit green background with the region space and a couple of class symbols on it. I mean, if you're gonna do a big box of this, I don't know what the original looked like, whether it was worse than this, but you know, you're trying to modernize it for the current era. You'd think they could have hired a few extra artists to make this just look a bit better. I mean, the class card artwork is nice, you know, that's probably the highlight of the aesthetics here, but to make these cards and the board just look so beige and generic, it's just, it's not a good look. It's not gonna turn people's heads. So all these basically do in effect is that you dealt three of them at the start of the game. And at the end of the game, if you have the majority population in these regions that match the board, you score another victory point. But during the game, if you're resolving a plague phase and you think, oh, I'm gonna get hurt by this one, you can discard one that matches your class symbol. And it essentially means that you don't have to resolve the plague for that class symbol for the round. And that's pretty much it. I mean, without the class cards that match these, you don't even draw more of them. You just have the free at the start of the game and that's it. So again, it's a pretty basic expansion. It doesn't really add a great deal to the game. And there's no reason you couldn't just throw this in when you're teaching it to, well, maybe not to gateway gamers, but to most gamers and certainly heavy gamers and that. Yeah, this one is just a no brainer to throw in anyway, because it's a really easy one to implement. And all it is, is just basically free cards that people have to contend with. So now we're on to the Academia's expansion or the University's expansion in such a way. This comes in two parts, one of which is pretty rubbish and the other one is actually pretty good. The rubbish part, I will spoil now, is the university pieces themselves. You essentially have two university pieces that you put on the board and then you've got this little event deck which just basically you flip one 
each round and it might make you get rid of a class card, it might have no effect, it might allow you to put people in the region and occasionally it allows somebody to score a victory point if they have people in that region. But that's literally pretty much all it does. It's just not a particularly interesting expansion. You have to have the rules handy in order to know what the various event cards do because they don't tell you in text form what they mean. So you constantly have to have the page open and even the, the class cards that go with them. I mean, they're fairly basic and mundane. I'm not that fussed about them. So universities, yeah, I just don't really care too much. Now, where this expansion does do well, though, is upgrades. Upgrades are definitely worth throwing into a game if you're comfortable with how Rattus works. Essentially, what happens is when you've chosen your class cards for the game, you get the tiles associated with that class and you put them out so that they're available. Level 2 and Level 3 upgrades. And what that happens is that when you choose a class card, instead of choosing another card, if you are holding a card that's, say, you know, for the, let's say I've got the soldier in front of me, I could decide, you know what, I'm going to upgrade my soldier ability. So out of the ones that are available, I can find the soldier and go, right, his ability is now level two, which now allows him to go forth and do more on this turn. You know, he can travel further or he can flip over or ignore more rat tokens, for example. And if it gets back round to me and I still have the soldier, then I can decide to upgrade it to level three and then the ability gets even more powerful. It doesn't make them more susceptible to the plague or anything, but it just means this character card you have gets better and better. Now, if somebody comes along and says, okay, that's too powerful and takes it off you, the upgrade goes away and it reverts back to level one. So it's not like they're going to get the souped up version when they take it. But this is a really cool expansion. It's a little bit trickier to include, particularly for new gamers to this, because you need to have essentially a page full of you know, explanations here. And they've got a massive grid table there to explain what every single one does. And they're pretty easy to understand when you read this. But yeah, you need to have this page out as a reference aid throughout the whole game. So it's definitely not one for the casual players of Radis. But if you've got gamers playing this, I want to throw these in all the time because it just adds more variety because not only do you have all these class cards that you can use but now you have the ability to upgrade them to be more powerful and it's almost like a kind of push your luck you know do i want more roles you know i would kind of like your role but then if i could make this one a little bit more powerful that'd be pretty cool as well and so it's that cool decision of do i want an upgraded peasant or do i want to take your monk yeah and it's it adds an extra choice that you have during your turn and some of these upgrades are pretty cool. So honestly, I think that this is one to uh, an auto include. Next to the Pied Piper, this is the one that you auto include. Now this big box comes with an expansion that hasn't been seen, I believe, in the old game. Guilds and Inns. Sounds like something from Carcassonne, really. And basically they have a class card each that you have to include if you're including any of these, uh, the, either one or both. You can include just one if you like. And they're pretty minor to say the least. I mean, the guild's one is just six special abilities that you can potentially unlock. The guild card allows you to place one of your population on here. And as long as the population is on there, you get to use whatever ability is on there in addition during your turn. Now, the innkeeper is even more ineffectual, really. Basically, the innkeeper card allows you to put somebody on here in a particular country location. And when you increase population in that country, if you've got somebody here in the inn, you get to add additional population. And that's pretty much it. You know, in both of these cases, if you have um, the most spaces on these boards, you get to earn additional victory points. And that's literally it. I mean, if, you know, if you were thinking, oh, should I get this box when I've got a, a little bit of the Rattis and I just want this new expansion? This is really minor. I mean, such a small thing that honestly, you could throw this into nearly every game of Rattis that you're going to include that class card for. But you've got to use up an entire class card just for this little sub board that's taken up table space and just nothing but add a little population and a bit of scoring at the end. I'd rather use more interesting class cards, really. And the guild's one, at least you've got like some cool ability that you can use. So maybe it's worth throwing this one in every now and again. But certainly I'm not going to throw this into every game if it means I have to use the guild card for this. And it's also teaching a lot of extra rules for this. Because with the innkeeper, it's simple. You just go there, increase population, that region, done. Done and dusted. With this one, though, I have to teach you six new abilities on this board and probably remind you of what they are in conjunction with upgrades and stuff like that. I'd rather just use a different class card, frankly, that doesn't require so much extra explanation. So these two really aren't that interesting either. 
And that's basically it for all the expansions. So do they improve the experience of Radis? Yes, some of them do, some of them I couldn't really care. And that's kind of the problem with this. If you are a fan of Rattus, like this is one of your family weight games that you love to play, then this is definitely worth picking up because there's a lot of variety and it's good value for what you get. I mean, you're paying about 50, 55 pounds for this box and you're getting a full game plus a lot of variety in how you can chop and change to your heart's content. So it's definitely got the value aspect even if the aesthetics aren't particularly great other than the class cards, which I do like. But in terms of the expansion modules themselves, I find the base game of Rattus to be just pretty average and boring. And if I was to include my choice, like my choice expansions from here, which is basically the variety of Pied Piper classes and those upgrade tiles, the game would be decent, but it still wouldn't be amazing. I'd still probably only up it to about a six out of 10, maybe a seven. I could probably go, uh, would I go for a seven? I mean, would I want to play this as often? It really, again, depends on the player count because it's not easy to gauge whether you've got the right enough number of players. I mean, if you've got the perfect number of players and you include the Pied Piper stuff and the like upgrade tiles, this could manage a seven out of 10, but that's as high as I can really give it. If I've got to use some of these other expansions or if I don't use the upgrade tiles, then at best this really becomes a six. I don't overly care about the region cards. I care very little about the guilds and inns. I don't like the university. I think that's just a pretty poor expansion. And Pied Piper is a must use, but that's just basically giving you more variety, which again is good. It probably bumps the game from a five to a six, but yeah, at most peak perfection, I can still only really give this a seven out of 10. So it, it's a hard one to kind of rate. I was kind of expecting a little bit more from Radis, And at the end of the day, it's not a bad game, but out of all the sort of older games that I've wanted to check out, this one just kind of feels like it's like, eh. I can see why this one hasn't really been talked about in recent years, how nobody's really been demanding to get this one back into print. It's a fine game, just nothing really that special. So that's it for me on this episode of The Broken Meeple. If you like what you see, then please thumb it up here and also thumb it up on Board Game Geek when the video goes live. Let's get it in the hot review section. And if you watch any of my other content, please thumb it up on Board Game Geek if you get a chance. But of course, check out more content on the channel, including the recent full detailed half hour review I did for Earth, the new hotness game that's been taking the industry by storm lately. Here's my a lot of detailed thoughts about that that I go into, and uh, you're going to have to check out the video to find out what my rating is. Until next time, remember, as always, regardless of whether you fall succumb to the rats of death or not, it's still only a game. Bye for now.